Hi, George here. And today I wanted to talk about the background eraser tool to remove the background back here behind this elephant. Now, normally for removing a background, I recommend using one of these selection tools, making a selection, doing a layer mask. That way you have a bit more control, that way a bit more freedom. But there are times when the background eraser tool is all you need, or you don't want a hassle doing a whole layer mask. So we'll be removing this background here and replacing it with that background right there. Fairly straightforward, fairly easy to do. So now I have more information about how to use the background eraser tool and also the other eraser tools. And I have that information over in my PSE Coach program. Just go over there, do a search for eraser, and you'll find all of those. Give a bit more detail on how to use these particular tools for this demonstration. Of course, I'll be showing you everything in here. But you want that in a text form if you want to be able to print that out. That's over in the Photoshop Elements Coach. If you don't have that coach program yet, I'll put a link for that right down there in the description. I'll go ahead and we'll close this down and open up the base images for this. And I have them here on my recent file list since I just did that. And here's the elephant file. And I'll dock that one. And here's the island picture. There we go. Okay, both docked, that's fine. Now whenever doing a project like this where I'm actually doing some changing to the image, I always make a duplicate of the background layer. So I'll right click over here on background and duplicate layer. There we go. Let's take a look at where we can find these two images. I found these over on Pixabay. Let me bring that site up and we'll take a look at that. There we go. And I have links for those two pictures in the description so you can click right to those. The first one's right here. Again, that link is in the description. Discover to download and I'll be using the 1920 by 1062. Go ahead and just download that to someplace on your computer. And the second image is right here. Again, I'll put this link in the description. And once again, we'll be using this 1920 image right there for the video. Okay, let's close this stuff down. And we're now ready to use the background eraser. Now there are a couple of things I like to do when using this tool to make it as successful as possible. Let's just first hide that background. You wanna be seeing transparency behind this and not the same image. That would just confuse everything. Over here, left-hand side, again, I'm in Photoshop Elements 2024, so the panel may look a little bit different for you, but everything's still in the same place, just the icon coloration is different. Go to the Eraser Tools, down to the Option Panel, and right here is the Background Eraser Tool. The size is right there, just look at the size. That's pretty good for our use. Tolerance is 15%, I'll show you what that does in just a second. And then Contiguous and Discontiguous controls the sampling. I always use mine on Contiguous. If you use Discontiguous, it does some odd things where it begins to erase the same stuff all over the place, and that's gonna to lead to errors. So I always use Contiguous with this particular tool. If you want to, you can come down and adjust your brush settings in here, for instance, hardness and so forth. I'll leave all of these at the defaults as well. I like hardness at 100% when using this particular tool. If I wanted to soften the edge, I can do that as a later step later on. Now you do want to zoom in when you're using this tool. So I'll just use the scroll wheel here and zoom in. If you don't have that set up in your version of Elements, just go up to the Edit menu, come down to Preferences and General. And this that checkbox right here, Zoom with Scroll Wheel. Very useful if you have the scroll wheel on your mouse. If not, just use the zoom control right up here, magnifying glass and the zoom tool. Okay, now here's a look at the tool. There's a, there's a circle that's your brush size. You can show that right here. There's a larger size brush. I'll put it back down to the 15 that I like using in here. There's a 15 size brush. Then you have that plus sign. Now this is for erasing the background. So you want that plus sign always to be on the background and not on your image. You'll see why right here. If I brush over here, it's doing some erasing. If I come here against this edge, it's going to erase the background. It's going to try to spot that edge as I go. So I'm overlapping the brush just a little ways into my image. And then Photoshop Elements tries to find where that edge is and it leaves that edge alone. If I come in here and erase, notice how it will erase inside of your figure. So you wanna make sure that you just kind of barely bring that in. If it's a bit too hard to do that, then bring your size up. Let's bring it up to 25. A little larger brush, a little easier to do that possibly. You tend to get a little better results with a smaller brush. I like going smaller if possible. Now it's not going to always erase everything. You see right here, it didn't get that bit. That's because Photoshop Elements didn't actually see the difference in there. I see it, but the program didn't. So we'll clean that stuff up later on. Now use the space bar. You can then move your image around. And what I like to do, again, I'm using this on the hard setting, is to come around and do the whole perimeter like this with a fairly small size brush. It does pretty well in hair, you can see that. Get up into here. Now I'm not gonna go clear up to the top there. I'll come over to here a little bit and continue on down. This little section here, I'm gonna make the brush size smaller, but I'll use the left square bracket key for that. I'll make the brush real small for this. 
And I'll come in here and just clean that whole section out with that small brush. Then I'll go back to the larger size brush again using the square bracket key and then back to making this selection. So I'm just erasing that background. You can ask you why I hid the background. If I show the background again, you don't see that erasure in there. So make sure that that background is hidden so you see the transparency. And we'll go clear around the whole figure like this. Now again, there's a spot right in here. I can't quite reach that. So make the brush smaller. And that's that left square bracket. And just kind of get into that tight area. And then larger again. I'll go back up to that 25. Space bar. And once again, there may be spots that it's going to have a hard time with. Like right here. We'll clean those up by hand. And just move along. Now just try to make sure that you keep that plus sign out into the background area that you don't accidentally move into your image. That's the only thing you really have to watch out for here. And I'll demonstrate that right here. If I kind of come in like this, it will erase your image if that plus sign goes into that image area. So make sure that the plus sign stays outside of that image area. Now you may get some thin spots. We can fix those later if we need to. It all depends upon how the final outlook comes in. Those may not even show once we get our background, our new background on there. And if they don't, then that's perfectly fine. We'll clean up this stuff here as a second step. So now it's just a matter of going through and getting everything erased in here just around the edge. And again, I'll show you why in just a moment here once we get this part of this project finished. And go clear around. Now these corners are open enough that I can just use this one size brush. If it's a real tight corner, I'll have to make the brush smaller. A larger corner, it will go ahead and fit into that corner. That's all right. And then continue on around. We'll just do the whole figure this way. This part is real fast. Just getting this background again. Whenever you see that image move, I'm holding down that space bar. There we go. And the nice thing about this tool is it's very fast once you kind of get the hang of it. Now this works best on images like this that have a real strong separation, real strong difference between the foreground and the background. If they're very similar, this tool is not going to be able to spot that difference and it's not going to work for you. So it only works in some occasions. In this case, the elephant is really standing out from the background, so it's a real easy one to do. This also is a very easy tool to use if you're replacing a sky. Maybe you have a just real plain blue sky. You want to put a cloud sky behind it. This is an easy tool to use to erase the background for that to put in that new sky. So there are times when this tool is really nice and easy to use. Again, the real trick on this is to make sure that you make that duplicate of that layer, the background layer, just in case you erase too much by accident. You can then go back to your original. Okay, at this point, I'm going to scroll out a bit, and we have the whole elephant outlined like that. Let's switch to the regular eraser tool right down here. It's a pretty big size. I'll bring that brush down a bit, maybe about there. So I'm about twice as big as before. And then I'll carefully come around, and I'll make this selection larger. And just work around the whole selection again. So the first time I'm in very close with a small brush, it's kind of my detail pass. This pass, I don't need to worry about that edge, so a regular eraser tool works out just fine. I just want to make that transparent area there larger for our next pass on this. We just do a couple of passes and do this to erase that background. So most of the background is actually going to be erased with the regular eraser tool and not with the background eraser tool. I only use the background eraser tool around the edges of the image so I don't make any messes in there. And then I use this for everything else. There we go. I think it'll fit in here. Yes, it does. This will take out this whole section right in here. If it gets, again, too large for the section, just bring your brush size down. That's the left square bracket key. And I come into those areas. I can also use this now to clean up anything which was kind of missed by the other tool. Make sure that you are only brushing inside of the clear area here, the transparent areas with this eraser because this will erase everything. And let's just go around. We'll clean up this area pretty tight in here. As you can see, I'll leave some of that dirt being kicked up in there. That's fine. And get this intersection with this smaller brush. And space bar right there to move that image. That's pretty good. And then finish up around the back side here. A little bit of Mess in there and then right across here. I'll just be very careful. Just do a quick little 
clean up on that edge in there. That should be fine. And then we don't forget that we do have this island area here, this kind of dirt area. You know, take out this area in kind of in behind the tail here and clean this whole area out because it requires a smaller brush. Looks pretty good. And then space bar and then right along in here. I can go to a larger brush now, a little bit larger. About a 50 is pretty good. Let's just get this cleaned out. There we go. Space bar again. Okay, that's taken care of this now back out a bit. So I've made a larger space now around this, except for right down here. Let's just get this bottom edge right there, a bit more space. Okay, now we can go a lot larger on the brush, about 150 pixels, and I'll just clean out the rest of the background this way. So large brush, large areas, small brush, small areas. That way you won't be accidentally taking out anything that you don't want. I'm going to use the big brush here just to clean out that background. There we go, clear to the top and down this side, just like that. Around the bottom by that bit of an island in there. And we've now erased that whole background. As you can see, fairly easy to do with this tool, as long as you have a subject which has a good separation between the background and your subject. We now need to have that other picture in here. For that, I'll go down to the photo bin. There's a second picture. I'm just gonna drag it in here from the photo bin. That's an easy way to do that. Our original image is too tall for this image. So I'm gonna move this and just put it up the top like there. And then I'll grab the control handle. You can kind of see it right here in the middle. I'll grab that and I'll pull it down so that I stretch that picture larger than it was before. Looks fine for the photo, so that's okay. And there we go, we've now removed that background. There's a little bit of a light haze right along in here. You can kind of see that. Everything else looks fine. Looks fine back here. A little bit of light haze there, probably not a big problem. Let's scroll in on the front part here. Now to get rid of this, we'll have to come in a lot tighter or darken the edge down. It really depends upon what that coloration is. We'll try both. Go here to the background copy. And the first thing I'll do is try to darken that down. I'll go over here where it says sponge tool right now. What you want is the burn tool. And I want a fairly small brush size. Put over here on the body so you can see that. Again, left square bracket, bring that brush size down so it's just a little bit bigger than the area I want to darken. And we'll try painting over this and see if we can darken that down. Okay, that's not really doing it, at least not in that area. So darkening is not gonna work, not too well. So I have to come in and be very careful with a very tight in eraser in here. So the last tool we have available for this one is the regular eraser tool right here. Let's come way down on this. And because I'm working on the image, I want to be real careful about this. I'm going to bring the opacity down to half of this, down to 50%. That way it takes a couple of strokes to remove that and gives me a little bit of a buffer. So I'll just come in here and just carefully brush in here and erase out wherever that white is showing up. It's not showing up everywhere, but we'll just come in really carefully, pick away at that. I'm not going to do the whole picture in here because that would just take too long for this video, but we'll do the trunk. And we'll do the part underneath the chin area. And come in and just carefully work in and erase out that white that you're seeing. Look at a bit of a white halo in there. Some place it doesn't show, some place it doesn't matter. But just take your time. Make sure you don't go into the image too far because, of course, that's going to ruin your work. This is the careful detail part of this. And we'll come around, get the bottom edge in here, and that'll be the inner half of that trunk. We'll then do the outer half. Same exact thing, just come in and carefully trim away any of those little white pixels you're seeing in there. Now the reason I couldn't use the darkening is because these pixels are actually white and you can't darken white, it just sits there. You can darken down midtones very well, but you can't darken down actual white. Same thing with black, you can't lighten up actual black, but you can lighten up midtones. Okay. Here just a little bit on this edge, and that's just about done. I don't see anything in here. It kind of blends in with the background. We do have this bit in here underneath the trunk right here and right along this edge here. I'll just erase right along that edge. Now we're in so tight, I'm doing such a small brush that this is going to be just fine. It's going to look great once this is finished. Some of that lightness back there is the actual background. That's fine. All I care about is the halo part, which we're seeing right over in here a little bit. Come down here. And there's a bit right in here as well. I can come in and just catch that. 
That's as far as I'll take this here. Of course, I'll just finish the rest off camera. No need to be showing you everything on that because this is all working out great. Okay, back up. And that gives her that little bit of lightness around there and it's now a perfect match on that. At this point, of course, you can come in and do more things if you want to. I think I'll make the elephant a bit more warm. We have kind of a cool background, so making the elephant image warmer will help to separate that out color-wise. On that background copy, let's go up in here. We can use a layer adjustment for this. Adjustment layer, photo filter. Use previous layer, that's important on this one because I want this only to be applied to the elephant and not to that island in the background. Here's our warming filter. This is the default filter that always shows up. And that's what I want. Bring my density up just a little bit, not 33. Now if I show and hide this, there is without and there's with. It's a little subtle thing, but the elephant is just warmer with this on and that helps to separate out the elephant from that background. Now if you enjoyed this video, go over and click on that like button. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you subscribe. I do new videos all the time. Don't forget to check out more information about how to use this brush and all of the eraser brushes over in my PSE Coach, my Photoshop Elements Coach program. If you don't have that, I'll put a link for that right down there in the description. And I'll see you next time.